Lots of announcements at Success Connect 2024 in Employee Central, Employee Central Payroll, and Time Management. I'll get into my recap next. Just got back from Success Connect 2024. This year's Success Connect was my eighth, and I can easily say that this is the best one I've been to. Lisbon was beautiful and the venue was ideal. The presentations I attended were all worth my time. I will say that the quality of the presentations has gotten consistently better over the years. Most of all, I want to thank Success Factors for investing in the confidence program for which I am a proud member of. This group gets to have additional Q and A's with Success Factors leadership and product managers during the conference. I think the group has been really valuable to me and I hope the feedback that we provide back to Success Factors makes the group worth the money and time that they invest. One more thing before I dive into the takeaways, I wanted to thank the attendees who came up to me during the conference and told me they watched my videos and get something out of it. Those of you that took the time to do that have no idea how much I value that feedback. It helps me know that you're getting value out of me talking into my computer. So thanks. So enough preamble, now to talk about what I've learned. Takeaway number one, Success Factors Payroll is sexy and getting sexier. One of the key points of emphasis that new president and chief product officer Dan Beck made in his keynote was to accentuate what a massive advantage Success Factors has in its world-class payroll engine. Sometimes it takes someone new to come in to remind you what you have, and I believe that is what Dan was doing here. It's easy for those of us who have been working with SAP for a while to forget what type of infrastructure that SAP has built out to keep its payroll current and compliant in over 50 countries with more being added all the time. This number dwarfs the competition. It's not even a controversial statement to say that SAP has the finest payroll engine in the world. Everybody knows that. After reminding us that payroll is the market leader, uh, in the keynote, Dan outlined a couple of major announcements in the area of employee central payroll. Announcement number one is that there is going to be a renovation of the payroll administrator's workplace, the uh, also known as the payroll control center. It is getting a new landing page, which gives access to KPIs and easy access to all things payroll. The PCC is going to get a new activity flow that will walk the administrator through the payroll process all the way through to post payroll reporting. New dashboards are on the way too. Announcement number two uh, in the area of payroll may be the killer app of the entire conference. It is an upcoming future, uh, feature within Joule that will answer employee questions on their paycheck, explaining the calculations to them. Employee paycheck questions are the number one driver of HR support tickets. So if Jewel can answer, say, even 30% of these, the positive impact will be massive. And quite frankly, success factors thinks they can get much higher than this. This is one, uh, this one is actually planned for the first half release of 2025. So you can tell that success factors is very serious about getting uh, this new payroll uh, questioning uh, chatbot service out as soon as possible. So shout out to all my payroll peeps uh, out there uh, grinding away on your payroll. Help is on the way. Of course, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, also provide a quick update on Success Factors Payroll, which is the cloud only payroll that Success Factors has announced previously is under development. From conversations I've had at the conference, work on a next generation uh, cloud version of payroll does continue. Success Factors is still investing in the new payroll and still sees this as the long term solution. The commitment is still there. Frankly, given their lead in this area, they probably feel like they have some time to make sure they get it right. Hopefully they won't take their foot in this gas, uh, off the gas in this area because getting payroll fully onto the cloud is essential for the long term. Takeaway number two, Employee Central gets a makeover. The headline here is the full user interface redesign that is currently underway in Employee Central. In the latest release that was delivered in preview a couple of weeks ago, the main display of the employee profile was completely reworked. 
Gone is the one page paradigm, which customers complained involved too much scrolling. The new design is compact and uses the space more effectively. In the roadmap session, we heard how the team sweat over all of the profile details and it shows the new screens use the real estate much more effectively. The upcoming releases will carry the new design to the edit screens and will provide more configuration capabilities on the profile. A new history view is also on the way. Now I just have to decide what to do with my 60 videos that are all in the old UI. No word yet if Success Factors is going to release a migration tool that will automatically update all my videos to the new profile. It might be time for an enhancement request. On the, on the position front, there is a new dual quick action that will walk managers through the process of creating a position. This is a wizard I've seen attempted for years going back to my SAP on-premise days. However, with cloud, uh, uh, AI and quick actions, we now have the tools that can plausibly deliver this. The idea is to really focus on the fields that a manager might be able to change. Laser focusing on the manager use case is a mindset change for success factors, and I definitely applaud them for it. There is a lot of commitment for AI quick actions in Joule. Uh, EC has been a trade, uh, it actually been a trailblazer in this area. When AI was first announced, I never would have pegged success factors as the likely first mover in this area, but this has definitely been the case. Right now, there are over 30 AI actions delivered and more being added in the area of Employee Central. Many of these can also be integrated with Microsoft Teams as well, which is included in customer base licenses, that integration to Microsoft Teams, that is. Other news on the roadmap front is EC is going to build out a feature that will automatically update foundation objects uh, to positions in employees when the relationships on the objects themselves change. Uh, the example that was provided was a cost center change assignment to a department change, um, which would then propagate to the positions in employees. Uh, this has been a big request uh, from EC customers for a while, so it's great to see it on the, the roadmap for the future. Takeaway number three, building enhancements is about to get a lot easier. Those of you who follow my channel know I like intelligent services, triggers, and integrations. However, they really haven't been updated in several years. When I asked about this to success factors people, the word I heard was that intelligent services were kind of primitive and couldn't be stretched any further, but that they were working on a successor. At Success Connect 2024, the successor was announced, which is integration with SAP Build. The plan is to build out numerous event hooks within EC that can be called from SAP Build. Those of you ha who have worked with EC for a while know that events are the most important part because they allow you to trigger updates individually. Think of it as new development tools um, as a, a more robust answer to both MDF objects and intelligent services. But with permission with, uh, from SAP, I am going to show a few snippets from video demonstration uh, to show you how this might work. As someone who often is being asked for extensions to EC, this was probably the most excited I was at the conference. So hopefully the techies out there will also see the potential in this area as you see this. It looks uh, it looks pretty straightforward and will enable customers to add in processes that are unique to their requirements. It will also make consulting a lot more fun as well, which is, of course, that's what we're all about is having fun. I do believe there's going to be some additional licensing cost with these, but I also understand that there will be a lot more capabilities coming. Not to worry, though, the team emphasized that intelligent services are not going away anytime soon, so your existing ones will be supported. Takeaway number four, success factors time progress continues. If you watched my recent video on the rise of success factors time tracking, you know that success factors time has come a long way in the past three to four years. The latest addition um, is no exception. With the addition of the time approval center, time statements, ESS work schedule changes, there have been many updates uh, that, that are still coming. 
as they mentioned in the roadmap session that I attended, the objective is to deliver a time solution that's capable of replacing uh, on-premise SAP time management. Uh, the addition of business rules to the time valuation process makes saying bye to SAP time management a very real possibility for a lot of customers as of today. But of course, Success Factors time is already leaps and bounds better than SAP time in user interface, mobile enablement, AI integration, and global time off capabilities. Coming up in time in the near future are simplified time entry for employees with repetitive time for situations like working from home for multiple days, a revamped time calendar that highlights shifts better, uh, geofencing for mobile time clock in a rebuilt time administrator workplace. So bravo, bravo to the time management team for their hard work and I'm really excited to see what is coming in the future. Takeaway number five, reporting is under construction. The reporting team made progress of their own. First of all, they acknowledge that they want to address some of the concerns with the current solutions. The pause on deprecation of current reporting tools was discussed. The presenter did state that list reporting using table reporting was not going away anytime soon as it serves a specific purpose that wasn't readily available in store reports, namely simple list reports that are easily downloadable. This will come as a relief to some customers and consultants. There were other key announcements that customers would be interested in. Most, uh, most welcome will be that, that uh, scheduled story reports will be available in the first half of 2025 per the roadmap. But it was in the progress and uh, it was in the progress in the work of analytics that I, that I found the most promising. They're building out what is a replacement for workforce analytics. That's my words, not theirs. That util utilizes new SAP technology. I saw a live, not pre-recorded demo of the tool, and the presenter was able to do things like a uh, use AI in the, in in the a to aid in the report creation. The filtering and insights were much smoother in, uh, than what is available in. Uh, stories today. The presenter acknowledged the need for a robust analytics tool and their desire to grow in this area. I am very pleased uh, that they were able to show their work as they could have easily just kept quiet until they were closer to completion, but I believe customers are better off knowing that something like this is in the oven so they can take those developments into consideration. So that's my wrap up. Wish I could have cloned myself and attended all of the talent sessions as there were a lot of developments in those areas as well. I will say that I came away feeling good about the direction things are heading as we uh, head into 2025. Hopefully by then AL, AI will have updated all my videos to use the new people profile. So if you enjoy Success Factors content or even just a bald guy with a Texas twang talking about HR tech, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks a lot.